Hello group. We're going to give a little instructional setup here on how to put the Lunt Solar Telescope in operation out at Powell Observatory. Okay, so we'll appear that we're going to be putting it on. The two cases with all the supplies. Just a little quick inventory. A little drive mechanism that will track. Hand controller. Plugs and power cord. Connecting cord for the uh, hand controller, and a little bolt that will anchor the drive to the pier. In the other box, the telescope itself, and the eyepiece. Okay, now, for setting it up, let's take our first shot of getting power. We've got the long extension cord, which you brought out. It gets hooked up. Whoa! On the far side of the uh, LCT, throw the cord. The cord goes underneath, not over the rails, in case the top opens. You can go either way around the LCT to do this. And then the little power cord, the power outlet, I should say, is up under here. Plug in, and we have power. Okay, we will now mount the little drive mechanism to the top of the pier. Okay, you notice it's got three little, three little holes on the bottom that mate with the three pegs on the top of the pier. Then, the lantern bolt goes up from the bottom. Hold on to the Hold on to the top just to make sure you don't push it out. Twist it in about half a dozen turns. And then tighten the top wing nut to hold it securely in place. This little, little twist thing here could be checked for tightness. It's usually tight. Next, we will start to get the power assembled on this so the GPS system can get started. Okay, just plug it, plug it in, and on the base over here, it, there are two plugs, either one will work. Whatever one you like. Then it can either be hung off the little peg on the side, or stuck on with the Velcro on the side there for the time being. Hook them together. We'll plug into the 12 volt outlet and then we will turn it on. Beep. And then to keep the wires straight on the bottom, set that next to the pier and try to corral all the cables with the Velcro. Okay. And the top here, yeah, just to keep a little bit of slack in that. So when we turn it, it doesn't pull out. And this should keep it secure. I guess we can mount the scope on this, can't we? Okay, we will set this on. Set the scope on. Little diagonal piece will set in here, feed it in from the top. And you may have to keep it quite a ways to the front end because it seems to be a little tail end heavy. That will help help the balance on it. Okay, that's tightened down. We can get the eyepiece. Eyepiece out of the box. Loosen, loosen. And the two screws tighten it down. I'll put this back here. One more little adjustment we can do. And that is going to be to loosen these two screws here to allow this to slide out a ways. Nope. Right that. Yeah, okay. We slid it out somewhere around 22 millimeters and that seemed to work pretty good. Yeah, that seems to hold that. Okay. 
now in the little south arrow line here will let you make sure that you have it generally aim south. In the, the south arrow is directly opposite the bubble level on the other side of the device. You get it aimed to the sun, you use the hand controller. It's got the little code already, it says GPS OK in the upper right. So we're set to go. We hit menu, select and slew, enter, and planets, sun and moon. And then we just find, there we get sun, enter, and it says, are we going to look at the sun? Yes, we do want to look at the sun. Enter again, and let's see if we can find the sun. Now, for the final fine focusing of the, uh, of the scope, it's got the little soul searcher device on the side, and you see a little image of the sun, which is not in the center of the device, so we have to move it there. So, we can use the controllers on the hand controller to do that. Now, this is set to move fairly fast. If it's moving too fast for you, you can just hold down a, another key, just choosing a six here, Wait till it beeps, and then it moves a little bit slower. And it looks like we've got it pretty good in center right there. Okay, now we'll check to see if the solar image is in the eyepiece. And it is. You can adjust this thing two ways for focusing. It's a zoom. I'm just going to try to push it in fairly for a relatively small image right now. And then I move the scope. There we go, it's back. Now for focusing, you got a coarse focus knob. Okay. And a little fine focus knob if you wish. And we should be able to see prominences, which we're seeing a few at about 5.30 and a little shadow line for a film in about the same location. So it does show up. The next two things to take a look for, if you get multiple images of the sun in here, you can turn this little knob one way or the other to see if you can eliminate the multiple images. You want to just see one sun. Okay. And the second thing to take a look at, if you really need detail and granulation, if you're having a problem getting it, a little tuning device here can be turned clockwise, counterclockwise, a bit to bring into the final focus for granulation. Now that the scope is all set up for observation, let's just close all these little covers here, just to make sure that nothing falls in them or water falls in them. At the end of the observing session, we just have to pack the equipment away. It's kind of the reverse of just what we did to set it up. We can start turning the power off and start disconnecting things, turning off the electrons. Okay. Holding it all up, it does have its own little Velcro wrap, should we wish to do that, but it does fit fairly nicely in this little box right there. And now for the hand controller, I'll just disconnect that both ends. It goes back into its little box. And the cable goes in, and the little Velcro tag can fit in there as well, or any other box as needed. Disassembling the scope, two screws, 
Hold on to everything. Take out the eyepiece. Goes back into this little eyepiece box with the lid. And the little cap goes in. Slight tighten down. This can now be slid back in. And the focuser can be racked in. Put the cover on it. This is the tricky part. It is threaded, but it's uh, kind of tricky to get the threads to start. So this might take a little bit of time. You don't want to cross thread it. There we go. Looks like we can take it loose. Hold on to the scope while you undo, loosen that. Slide it out, and we're free. Sets back in the box, like that. Little pegs align with there. Everything's looking pretty good in here. We can take off the drive. Okay, loosen the wing nut while you hold on to the, t hold on to the drive mechanism. You don't want to knock that loose. Loosen the wing nut and then remove the bolt. Okay. Lift off. Bolt can be put in there. And this will sit in like so. And that may end up nestling down a little bit, but it fits in there. You've got everything in. We can close the cases. And the last is disconnect the power cord from the LCT.